Welcome back to the second weekly worm farm check-in with the Urban Worm Bag. Now, I know I call this the weekly worm farm check-in, but to be honest with you, it's been about three or four weeks since I've done the last one of these. Life kind of got in the way, had some family in town, we had Christmas, I was working a lot. So with the holidays and my own work schedule, I just didn't have time. But the worms did such a number on the pumpkin that we fed it back then, that I fed it pumpkin yet again. But it wasn't all great news for this bag. We had some really low temperatures here, so I took a 20 inch by 20 inch seed starting mat and put it inside the urban worm bag, which helps keep the temperatures up. And when the temperatures are higher, the microbes and the worms are much more active. But this new heat source dried out the surface of the vermicompost, which already tended to be on the drier side anyway, because of the really low humidity that we had during that cold weather. So I put a couple of urban worm blankets on top of the vermicompost and every now and then I would wet these blankets down in order to give the vermicompost an addition of water. You could also do this with a damp towel to slowly release water into your bin if you need some extra moisture and you're not interested in the urban worm blanket. So these hacks are what you gotta do sometimes to keep your bin going during extreme temperatures. Now, if this worm thing is new to you, I wanna send you the Worm Farm Startup Guide, which is a cool little PDF that's gonna help you start up a small worm bin like this one to recycle your food scraps. Just click this little link above my left shoulder. It's gonna take you down to the video description where you can sign up and get that guide immediately. And you can also check the top link in the video description to get that guide. Anyways, enough of me chattering. Let's see what's going on inside the urban worm bag. All right, here we go. Let's open this thing up, see what's going on. All right, got this uh, seed starting mat here uh, for uh, for heat. Uh, Vivo Sun makes a 20 inch by 20.75 inch. I don't know why that extra three quarters of an inch is there. It probably has to do with seed starting trays or whatever. But this is a seed starting mat that I use uh, to keep... Uh, to keep things going in the urban worm bag. I use a smaller one in the in the budget worm farm if you've seen that uh, that YouTube series. Got a couple urban worm blankets here which uh they don't really do that much in terms of insulation and heat trapping. What they really do more of is trap moisture and that's kind of what I like. And I can actually water the top of these and it kind of provides some slow release water into the bin. So let's see what's going on here. First thing we'll do is uh, we'll check the temperatures. So we've got uh, what looks like, uh, so it's 39 degrees here um, in the Philly area, 43 degrees, 43 degrees inside the barn. Uh, looks like it's nice and warm uh, in the vermicompost up uh, 65, 70 degrees. So really happy to see that. Uh, we'll check the moisture here. It's tough to do this when you've got a thriving worm population because you're, you're gonna end up getting some, some worms uh, when you squeeze. Um, so actually, if you can just see a little bit, there might just be a little bit of water that you can see, but <clears throat> you don't even need to wait for the water to come out. You can actually see how the, how the vermicompost kind of aggregates and balls up in your hand. And if you tap it, it should come apart. Uh, that is pretty good moisture. Might be a little bit on the dry side, but that's, that's okay. We're, we're doing fine here. So this part's gonna be really fun. Gonna see what is underneath this pumpkin. Um, wow, here's the first. Here's the first bit. Take that and bring that up to the uh, up to the screen. I mean, these guys were just sitting underneath this uh, this pumpkin. I'll show you what what it looks like. I mean, they've they've honestly worked through almost all of it. There's very little pumpkin uh, meat left that they're going after, so they're just pretty much down to the skin. Over here, same thing. It's maybe not. Well, no, I was going to say maybe not quite as many worms, but there's still plenty of worms really really thriving population here i'm really excited about it. this is better than i thought it would be to be honest with you um kind of everywhere i grab is a good good handful of worms here um right here is okay there's still some some meat some pumpkin meat here but right here is just i mean these these guys are just crushing it i gotta imagine that they're mating too i'm not sure i'm seeing any I see a cocoon right there. I don't know if you can zoom in on that at all, but there's a little cocoon at the end of my thumb. Um, so I'm really happy with the, really happy with how this bin is going. I think I'm just going to continue to do what I was doing before. I'm sorry, I just got to pick up another, <laughs> another handful of this. This is really, really addicting. So we started this bin with about a pound or two of worms. I think it was actually closer to two pounds, and I, I think these worms are growing out even to even more than that. I mean, this is. This is just a lot of worms. I'm really, really excited about this. So I think we're safe to feed again. 
um, what we're going to do this week, and I'm about to go on vacation, uh, is um, kind of overfeed a little bit more with the pumpkin. Um, so what I've got, I'm going to start with a layer of, this is a pit moss right here. Um, that's P-I-T-T-M-O-S-S. -S. Uh, you can find this on, uh, on Amazon. I'll try to remember to put a link in the video description for that. Um, but it's uh, made from recycled paper. You can also use shredded paper, but I just like the way that this stuff that this stuff breaks down uh, very, really pretty quickly. So we're going to do that. And we're going to add some more pumpkin. And <clears throat> I actually took the skins off. I still have some pumpkin that's uh, that's kind of rotting away. Um, <laughs> so I have just got this much pumpkin, and I'm again breaking my own rules here by by overfeeding a little bit. Um, just because I, you know, I always tell you guys, don't overfeed, don't overfeed. And then here I am kind of doing it myself, but I am going out of town for a couple of weeks. Um, the worms aren't going to starve, but I do want to keep them, keep them nice and fed. So I added this layer of the pit moss here to help absorb the moisture as this stuff breaks down. But I think when we come back, the worms are just going to be, have swarmed this stuff. Um, I'll go ahead and try to spread it out a little bit. It's actually kind of frozen but it'll get warmed up here pretty quickly. We're just spreading this out over the top. Too cold for fr fruit flies around here. Um, not worried about the seeds. The seeds will get in there and they'll sprout and we'll pick them out. Those seeds are, are no big deal. So anyway, I'm looking forward to this, seeing what this looks like. Really happy so far with, with what I've seen, uh, with the, how these worms are doing. And uh, yeah, can't wait to come back and check it out in a couple of weeks. We'll see you then. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. So even though I took a couple weeks off, the worms kept working away. Their size is kind of surprisingly good, to be honest. And obviously, we've got a really thriving population going on in there. So even though it's cold and dry outside, things are warm and humid enough in this urban worm bag. And I'm really happy about that. So we pushed forward with another feeding of uh, pumpkin and paper waste this week. And it's going to be another two weeks or so before I do uh, one of these updates again. Going on vacation with my family for some skiing in Colorado. Then I'll be golfing for a few days in Phoenix before presenting at the Arizona Warren Farms Warren Business Conference. And I'm really looking forward to that. Looking forward to all of that. So I'm kind of okay overfeeding the worms this week, knowing that they'll likely be just fine when I return. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a couple weeks.